Prashnopanishad talks uh, eg- uh, exhaustively on pranayama. Pranayama, student approaches the teacher and asks the question, what is prana and how does it operate, how does it come into the body and how does it live? And uh, gives the response, pranasyedam vashe sarvam tridive sarvam pratishtitam mateva putran rakshastvam rischa prajnascha videhinaha shrischa prajnascha videhinaha The prana is like a mother, like mother looking after the small baby. Prana envelopes everywhere and looks after the body. The prana, the prana is the life force. It energizes our personality. Personality like um, roots uh, of the tree nourishes each and every leaf uh, in the tree. So is this prana nourishes all dimensions of our personality. Uh, Upanishad talks about Atmana Prana Sambhuta. From the God, this Prana is born. Prana is regarded as uh, the son of the, the Supreme Lord. So, uh, the Prana, Prana is called as, uh, Supreme God is called as Mukya Prana. His son is called as Madhyama Prana, also represented through Hanuman. The Upanishad talks about how this prana works in the body. The prana, like a um, same person, takes on various roles and uh, when uh, that person takes on various roles, uh, title changes and does various things. So is prana enters into the body and takes the role of prana through that it uh, energizes, the, it moves up, energizes the eyes, ears, nose, uh, uh, the, uh, the taste, uh, taste bud and skin, it energizes the mukha, face is called as mukha, mukha energizes the mukha, why, why, since it is energizing the mukha, mukha prana also called as mukya prana, mukha means face. Energizes, able to see, able to hear, able to talk. It's uh, all the sense perception, uh, it's uh, through, that is called as Mukya Prana. Prana operates here, in the upper part of the body. And Vyana, to counter the Prana moves up, to counter the upward flowing energy, counters another name called as Apana. Apana, which to keep the Prana in check. Apana, downward flowing energy. Downward flowing energy is important uh, to um, emptying the bowel and bladder. Other day, earlier this year, when I went to India, some uh, student said uh, he could not uh, empty the bladder as if it was uh, bursting and he was ambulance, he was rushed to hospital. Uh, he was saying that uh, had it been 10 minutes delayed, his bladder would have bursted. And you want to push it out. It, we think we take it for granted. You want to empty the bowel, empty the bladder, the downward flowing energy. That is the downward flowing energy is called as apana. Prana and apana are um, the, if the bladder is, uh, if apana is too strong, that means prana is weak. People do not have bladder control. Bowel control, they can't control the bowel bladder control. And uh, because of the, when the prana is weak, when the prana is strong, it holds the apana in check. And apana holds the prana in check. Apana is holding them, their prana, apana, samayukta, they hold them. And another one, the Upanishad is talking about uh, Vyana. Vyana, it resides in the heart. It is talking about a heart. Why? Supreme Lord resides in everyone's heart. He is there, Vyana. There are 101 nadis here. 
in the heart. Hundred and one nadis. Each nadi further bifurcates itself into hundred sub nadis. Hundred and one further divides each each one into hundred nadis, and each such nadis further get divided into seventy two thousand nadis. Seventy-two thousand nadis. Upanishad talks about how many nadis we have. Seven hundred and twenty-seven point two million nadis are there. Small nerves. It goes and each and every nook and part of our body supplies the nutrients. The distribution, uh, the logistics. We talk about logistics department. the vyana is the logistic department nutrients right nutrients to each and every part of the body it conveys the some part of the body needs certain type of nutrients vyana is such a thing it conveys the what is needed for each part it supplies that type of nutrient that is vyana prana and the samana the samana prana it is talking about uh, in the heart center samana the digestion agni fire should be there without in the house if you want to cook something without fire you can't cook body also whatever you have eaten it has to be digested this is called as digester digestion you need a fire fire upanishad talks about this fire has operates seven ways it's not one fire it is talking about seven fires are there seven tongues of fire are going into eyes seven for nourishing the eyes in the and ears nose your tongue and uh, touch mind and intellect if you want to have a brilliant mind the samana plays a very dominant role brilliant mind and unlocking the manomaya kosha unlocking the vijnana maya kosha is this digestive fire it is talking about digestive fire today is ekadashi why ekadashi is observed so that this fire gets flared up you will have the fasting helps in illumining the mind illumining the intellect memory power Um, the, uh, the uh, this uh, se- the seven fires it is talking about these seven fires upanishad uh, they are associated with seven colors of the sun so uh, uh, the seven type uh, rays uh, when you put the sun rays through the prism it opens up into seven streams we broyer uh, talking about seven streams uh, talks about this seven colored tongued flame in the stomach must when it merges with the seven colors of the sun health dawns the seven colors this seven must merge with that one the when the fire is there you should do such a brilliant thing when the fire is there not to squander the energy when the fire is there fire when the tongue has come out why it has come out it is expecting you to do brilliant things that brilliance it gets absorbed into the sun's one it meeting point the sun seven colors it is talking about what are the functions of the seven colors of the sun it helps in seven properties of sun it does one is gives the warmth in the winter month we stand out in the sun we want uh, sun uh, warmth the second one it gives uh the light luminosity the third one we would uh, put the cloth outside for drying third property of sun is uh, drying property it has to dry and the fourth property in the spring season small fruits are coming slowly now it is a green fruit uh, slowly it get color gets trans uh, transformed into yellow red color changes because of the sun rays another one is a sun rays and the uh, another one the in the winter month so much of leaf is there on the ground it is the decomposition is not happening 
in the warmth starts decomposition another one like a fire in the belly digester it helps in digesting digesting things what uh, in the earth in the planet and another one it helps in rainfall in the on the after a hot day cools down with the rain another one change of seasons change of seasons through the sun seven properties this fire here it has to be merged with that one upanishad talks about another one udana udana the prana the udana prana function of that one it takes um, the soul the virtuous people to punya loka people of the virtue great people it takes them to the higher plane people of uh, uh, the sinful deeds it takes the soul to the neither world people of mixture of both virtues and vices they are brought back onto manushya loka this human plane is called as a manushya loka mixture of good and bad you are here the, the udana brings it here and uh, not only how the prana operates in the body it talks about how the prana is there in the universe it is comparing uh, the sun as a prana <clears throat> there is a prana in the sun earth is called as a apana apana prana and apana they are held in place if a one prana, energy is more earth will go out of the orbit and when pulling down and pulling up prana and apana and uh, the uh, samana it is talking about the space in between is called as samana vyana means air movement air movement is called as vyana and udana udana prana when the temperature temperature has to be in balance when the body has become cold when the temperature fire has extinguished udana takes the soul out into another life it takes it into another life the, and this prana and apana can be compared to uh, on the 23rd of this month um, uh, india for the first time in the world uh, uh, launched the satellite um, the probe onto uh, the southern pole of moon chandrayaan 3 successful successfully launched it can be compared to chandrayaan yatra our uh, chandrayaan uh, the chairman uh, somna ji he said the idea behind the rocket launch the technology comes from the vedas contemplating on that one so much of knowledge is there i get scientist gets the inspiration from contemplating on the upanishad and vedas he also uh, uh, admitted and he said only the western scientist they claim that re- they rebadge claiming that it is their invention but already the inspirations are there in a rocket launch the pushing the rocket um, out of orbit through prana making the vikram lander to land on the moon surface is through apana apana and uh, vyana the the, uh, the rover probe to come out and probe the surface of the moon it is called as vyana moving around vyana and uh, samana it needs a power the uh, vikram lander and um, uh, rover uh, um, the, the, the probe it needs a battery power it is um, in the this is the moon cycle moon cycle is still for 8 days the it is uh, facing the sun enough it is drawing enough energy so the solar energy it is absorbing after the the moon when it starts moving away because of the so frigid condition the probe cannot work the samana that is samana and udana udana is the one vikram lander able to eject 
the rover ro- rover probe in the right place right terrain on the right time it is udana prana udana prana this concept of prana it can be applied to chandrayaan also this is there in the five dimension it is uh, saying that upanishad also talks about you have such a prana launch yourself to great heights sky is the limit for your yourself like vikram uh, Ch- uh, chairman of isro said sky is the limit launch yourself to the great heights in your life and not to squander your uh, underestimate your potential launch yourself to the great heights explore exploit and revel within life is for exploring exploiting the new dimensions new chapters in your life explore them exploit them and revel within pranasya vijnaya amritam asnute vijnaya amritam asnute iti it talks about twice knowing how the prana comes into the body how it operates within the body one gets freed from the cycle of moving from one body to another one finds the freedom by knowing how prana functions one knows the how prana functions make use of his or her life judiciously